The Lamborghini Countach won of the original supercars, and it was only built because the boss lost the bet. But it never saw the inside of a wind tunnel. Instead, the designers drove it around with wool tufts stuck to it, like these, and modified the car accordingly. So how aerodynamic was it? Let's find out. We simulated this one, and it is sporting the sweet rear wing with exaggerated end plates. And you can see just how much the flow gets kicked up by the wing, indicating a lot of downforce. And in fact, its downforce coefficient comes in at 0.12. Pretty good. The wake is very large, which is partly because the rear is quite large too. But surprisingly, the flow over the rest of the car is very streamlined. Literally nowhere in this plane is their flow separating. Even at the front of the roof, which creates quite a sharp angle with the front windshield. Because the hood is angled so aggressively, the flow travels seamlessly over it. The front of the underbody is doing a pretty decent job in accelerating the flow, which helps increase the downforce at the front of the car. This complements the rear wing's downforce and helps keep the car stable. At the edge of the car, both the front and rear wheels produce very large wakes that disturb a lot of the car's flow. They are also exaggerated by the front wheel's blocky wheelhouse. Incredibly, the flow over the side of the car is very streamlined, which is amazing considering just how angled the car is around here. The wing's end plate is doing pretty well though, and not much of a wake is forming over it, but the wake is going down a little, so we can see that the wing's performance is compromised here. Looking down from the top, the wheelhouse's flares, especially the rear ones, are not good for aerodynamics because you can see just how much the flow blows out and creates large wakes. But somehow the designers managed to get the flow to pull back in very sharply and reduce the wake size. That's probably due to the lower pressure around the diffuser region. Looking at the vortices, because the front 70% of the car is so streamlined, the wheels and wheelhouses are the only things producing substantial vortices here. You can see at the ends of the rear wing, there are still vortices being produced, indicating that these end plates aren't 100% effective, which also agrees with what we saw earlier, where as we approach the end of the wing, it produces less downforce. That is because these vortices are rolling over and reducing the effective angle of attack the wing is seeing. The rear wake is full of very large vortices, which are continuations of the other vortices produced over the car, and also a lot of new ones from the rear. Looking at the drag isosurfaces, expectedly, there is quite a lot coming from the wheels, but also a decent amount from the rear wing. Expectedly, the rear is producing a lot of downforce, but apart from that, the rest of the car is very good, which is surprising considering just how angled it is. The drag coefficient comes in at 0.46, which is better than 0.47, but not as good as 0.45. Peace out, amigos.